CITI's Development Initiative for Asia, or CDIA, is first and foremost a project preparation facility. Now, there are many cities across Asia and the Pacific who've got aspirations to develop their infrastructure and improve the lives of their citizens, but they don't have the knowledge or the capacity to make it happen. Now, this is where we come in. We are an Asian Development Bank Managed Trust Fund, co-implemented by the ADB and the French Development Agency, AFD. Our donors are currently the governments of Austria, Switzerland, Germany and France and the European Union, but we're hoping that this will expand to include others in the near future. Our role is quite simply to help secondary cities prepare projects for downstream funding by any international or national organisation, or indeed the private sector. As I said, we work across the Asia-Pacific region, and so far, since we were founded in 2007, we've worked in 21 countries and 113 cities, from Georgia all the way through to Fiji. All of our work is in the urban sector, whether it be water supply, drainage, sanitation, solid waste management, urban mobility or urban renewal, anything urban. We provide technical assistance on a grant basis. Our typical project would be $500,000, and that's to assist with project concept, pre-feasibility and feasibility work, including preliminary design. We mobilize teams of highly qualified international and national experts to develop a project preparation study for a resilient, inclusive and sustainable infrastructure project. In parallel, we conduct capacity development initiatives and we identify short, medium and long-term programs to ensure the project can A, be implemented and B, be operated and maintained sustainably in the longer term. Getting help from CDA is actually very simple. All of our projects start with an application letter from the city together with an application form and a state level endorsement letter. The form can be downloaded from our website, which is www.cda.asia, and is very straightforward. Alternatively, just reach out to us directly through email, and we can have an initial discussion, after which we can help City to complete the procedures and go forward. It really is very straightforward. Being bankable is not just about the choice of technical options and the engineering feasibility. A project needs financial, economic, environmental, social and institutional due diligence. And this is quite often where the problem issues lie. This normally requires very specific expertise, which is not always available to the cities. Now, together with that, there must be strong support from local and national government Project champions are essential, and without them, it's difficult to get a project going forwards. Projects often need institutional change to ensure sustainability, and hence the responsible authorities need to be open to reform rather than just carrying on as per norm. Cities often like to pursue too many projects at the same time and try to cover all sectors, so it's really important to prioritise projects and ensure long-term logical development planning. Our downstream funders place significant emphasis on projects being resilient and climate change focused, which is not always understood or appreciated by cities. There's therefore a great need for knowledge sharing to help projects move forward. Our first step is always to meet and get to know the city officials and their city. We really need to get a feel for the issues. So through a series of discussions, we help cities identify the core problems and hence the priority projects. We also identify projects which can perhaps be pushed back and be addressed a little bit later because in reality, they're a lower priority. Now, as we CDA speak both the city language and the donor language, we play the role of the project facilitator and we try to make sure that the project that the city would like to take forward gets linked to appropriate downstream investment. Now, once the project's formulated, we mobilise teams of international and national experts to support the city. Now, we always work on a grant basis, although we do ask cities to contribute with in-kind support, such as office space, data, liaison stuff. 
We make sure that capacity development is fully integrated into all of our projects to ensure that responsible authorities can both implement the project and an operator maintain the resulting infrastructure in an efficient and sustainable manner. We systematically assess risk and vulnerabilities, and we mainstream climate change adaptation into the design of all of our projects. I think the first and most important one is that we really are very easy to work with. Our procedures are simple, straightforward, and without bureaucracy. A prime importance also is the fact that we can respond quickly to calls for assistance, and mobilize it the earliest opportunity. We're very flexible. Our prime objective is always to fill the gap between where the city is now and where the downstream agency wants to pick up the project. This is the part of a project development where cities always need the most help, and that's what we're there for. And we've got excellent connections with key funders such as the ADB and, and, and AFD and we understand their requirements. We therefore ensure that the projects are best formulated to ensure funder interest in, in the project to help the city move onwards. Now, we are totally city focused. We have no baggage. We work in, with, and for the city. Now, the first is always going to be Tbilisi Metro in Georgia. We worked very closely with the city to leverage funding for the rehabilitation of the metro system. It is actually quite an old, antiquated system. It represents quite danger to the public. We had to work very closely and ensure that the financing came through. And I'm very pleased to say that as I speak today, that project is currently being implemented in the city. Now, that particular project led on to a whole series of knowledge sharing and capacity development projects in which we helped the city make the shift from private to public transport. We helped the city to develop its own bus priority design capability, which is transforming the city environment. Another of my favourites was always in Yangon in, in Myanmar, where we worked with the Yangon City Development Committee, and that led to two major water supply projects, one being funded by the ADB and the other the AFD. The two projects are very much interlinked and this demonstrated how we as CDA working with the city could get in multiple donors for projects which are interlinked for the greater benefit of the city. I've always wanted to have CDIA in Africa. In order to go forward this is several things I'd like to recommend we do. Firstly, find a suitable international organization in which CDIA can be housed and we can have their overall umbrella support for things like office space, consultant procurement and financial management. We should adopt a trust fund mechanism so we can pool financial resources from multiple donors. Establish a flexible secretariat to run the program. This does not need to be extensive, but, but just highly capable recommend having a five-year strategy and a long-term vision in place to attract the donors. Establish a strong branding and outreach program very early on. Also recommend initially partnering with other existing initiatives to get the contacts and then to leverage on existing programs. As CDIA Asia, we would love to talk to any organization which would like to go forwards in Africa, share our experience and, 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 and partner and have discussions to help go forwards.